today on the Genius Podcast. Rimu stable. When NASA's Curiosity rover touched down on Mars in August 2012, the world witnessed an engineering feat many you describe as nothing short of genius. Touchdown confirmed. We're safe on Mars. The rover itself is genius. The, the compute element and how everything comes together to make that thing work, genius. Hi, I'm Julie Meshek, a producer and programmer at New York's 92nd Street Y. In March 2015, 92Y launches Seven Days of Genius, a wide-ranging look at the concept of genius and the many innovations that have shaped our world. We'll explore these topics and more in conversations on air, on stage, and online. Today I'm speaking with Kobe Boykins, a mechanical engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. He worked on all of the Mars rovers, including the Spirit and Opportunity rovers launched in the early 2000s, and the newest rover, the Curiosity. I asked Kobe to explain what exactly the rovers are doing on the surface of Mars. He started by explaining the missions of Spirit and Opportunity. What they're doing is they're looking, uh, their, their mission was really to follow the water, to look for past evidence of water on the surface of Mars. And they do that from investigating the rocks, sort of like a geologist would. Is there telltale signs in the rocks that would inform us that there was water on the surface of Mars? For Spirit, she went to the Gusev Crater. Looking in the Gusev Crater, it looks like from orbit there could have been a big lake there and then it flowed out. Um, For Opportunity, it went to the Meridiani Plains. In the Meridiani Plains, we were looking for a mineral called hematite. Here on Earth, if we find hematite, hematite forms in water. Um, So these were really, really good locations that looked like from orbit that they would have either this mineral or had water flowing there. Both of those rovers did find that there was liquid water on the surface of Mars at some point in the past. And so uh, that was very, very exciting. I mean, you know, I, I'm saying it now because it's it, this is it's 11 years later. But it, it's a, it's amazing that we sort of at some level, these rovers were able to show through lots of different signs that Mars once had water on the surface. And now with Curiosity, the most recent rover, um, uh, the Mars Science Laboratory, she's really a roving biologist at some level. She's looking to see if Mars was once a place that could be habitable. Did it have the building blocks, the basic pieces to support life? And so now we've gone really into just looking at the geology of the rocks to tell if there was water there. Now that we know that there's water, can we go to the next step? Can we see signs on Mars that it was able to support life and then maybe even find life if, if it did exist in that particular location? So what is your inclination there? Do you think those signs of life will be found? I, pred- I predict that we'll find signs of life. I mean, uh, almost everywhere we find water, I should say, everywhere we find water here on Earth, we find life. It seems to be the natural building block to, to, for the presence of life. And I mean, you know, Mars is very similar to Earth in the, in the respect that we call them sister planets. So, you know, the carbon, the nitrogen, the, you know, the oxygen, the, the basic building blocks are there. Uh, so it's, it's not a far stretch to say that we would find life on Mars. So you mentioned the discovery of water and that of hematite. What are some of the most important things we've learned by having the rovers there? So for for me, a lot of people think of the rovers as as ways of looking at Mars as a place to terraform and maybe leave Earth if we do something wrong. Um, And I hate that idea. I really do. I I despise it. Um, The reason I think Mars is so exciting and so interesting for us to learn from is now that we know Mars had water. And we were starting to learn and understand the evolutional cycle of planets. It's can we learn what happened to Mars's water? And can we understand the signs of the evolution of that planet and see how that could affect Earth? Are there things that we're doing as human beings that are accelerating that change? Or are there telltale signs that say, okay, here's what's happening and what happens to the water when these cataclysmic events occur? And so I think that's one of the things that excites me about learning from Mars is really it's sort of a history lesson of what possibly could happen here on Earth. So I know the rovers are taking pictures, and that's part of the data that's being sent back. Do you have a favorite picture that's come back from a rover, and, and what does it tell you? So, so my favorite image from the surface of Mars actually isn't a picture of Mars at all. It's a picture of uh, our sun, and just to the south of our sun is Earth. And um, you can actually see the moon as well. Uh, that's probably my favorite picture from the surface, mostly because it's 
looking at our planet from somewhere else. And, and how many times does somebody get to do that? And uh, I guess I fantasize about a human being being able to do that as well at some point in time, stand on the surface of Mars and sort of look back from this place that we started from as, uh, as, as now we start to become explorers and, and open our minds to all the possibilities of things that are out there. And so then what's next in the exploration of Mars or just space exploration more generally? For me personally, I think the most exciting thing is uh, in, in the budget, they're starting to talk about doing an exploration of Europa. And I think Europa would be amazing to explore. Uh, it is, you know, one of our uh, local planetary bodies that we believe has liquid water on the surface, not on the surface, but subsurface. And so in that just alone, that becomes exciting. I mean, if you're if you're a romantic and you read, you know, 2001, A Space Odyssey ends at Europa and here's this intelligent life. So, I mean, there's some there's some just uh, inciting things about Europa as well. I think that's one place that we go. I think um, for uh, planetary sciences, if you will, uh, with uh, James Webb Space Telescope being ready to get launched. And then the next one, the next telescope, uh, which right now is called W First AFTA, there's some really interesting technology that could be added to that particular spacecraft. Right now, the baseline is a thing called Chronograph. Uh, they're, they're talking about another piece of technology. It's called Starshade. Either way, these are technologies that would be able to image an Earth-like planet around another sun. And so talking to people, there's a guy that we work with. He worked with Carl Sagan. Um, and uh, he says the thing that our generation will leave the next generation is the first image of another Earth around another sun. And so that to me is super exciting. And finally, since we're talking about genius, I asked Kobe Boykins to share his thoughts on the nature of genius. I mean, I think genius is, so if I just use a word, uh, you know, genius sparks up you know, a conversation. It's not one little thing. I think it's curiosity, it's intellect, it's uh, hard work, it's perseverance, it's failing. Uh, and I maybe I'll stress that one. It's, it's being able to get up after you fail. Um, I think that's what people forget is that a lot of the people we consider today genius, you know, the people that did this or did that, they failed thousands of times, right? And you don't hear about their failures, you hear about their one success or their two successes. So I think what it, what it really drives to me is the hard work, the perseverance, and then understanding that you learn from your failures, right? And I think that's probably what genius is, is to learn from your failures and do better the next time, not necessarily just dwell on what happened. But I think genius is is that thing that inspires you. At the end of the day, I think if I just gave a definition, it's the thing that inspires you because um, it makes you want to be better and it makes you want uh, to learn more. Kobe Boykins is a mechanical engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, where he worked on the Mars rovers. He frequently speaks on the topic of space exploration as part of National Geographic Live. Look for him at NYU's Skirball Center in May 2015. And in the meantime, find out more about 92Y's 7 Days of Genius by visiting 92Y.org forward slash genius. <laughs> <laughs>